In this series of quick tips, we're exploring the relationship between value and intensity scientifically. In Quick Tip 229, I set up the colors for you in order to be able to mix a chart that shows the relationship of red and green. First of all, you can go to our website at dynamize.com and uh, click on free stuff, curse it down until you find the value intensity chart. It's a blank chart just like this. Uh, you only have to get one in order to print just as many as you want in order to do this entire set of studies. Um, and so what I'm going to do now is to go through a process. I've set up a system that will allow us to explore scientifically uh, the relationship of value and intensity in the two sets of colors, red and green. Now, we've adjusted the hues. That's the first step, and we did that in the previous quick tip. Uh, we adjust the hues so that each color is as close to an exact complement as we can get it. The second step is to place the darkest darks and the lightest lights of the highest intensities first. So we need to get here on the corners of the chart, we need to get a structure that we can compare um, compare relationships with. Now, in order to get um, get this, we're going. I'll start over here with the high. I call this the highest intensity. This is the intensity chart. Let me just explain how this works. This area measures intensity. On this side, we're going to have the highest intensity of the color. On this side, we're going to have the high intensity of the complement of that color. As we move those complements towards each other. This is the neutral. So with intensity, you're dealing with moving two sets of high intensities towards each other so that they will completely, uh, so that they will produce a, uh, almost a complete neutral in this row, uh, in this column right here. In the rows, something different happens. In the rows, we're dealing across the top here with the darkest value. Now, even though this says high intensity, that means that this is the highest intensity we're going to see in that darkest value. And then as we go into mid-dark, still, it will be the highest intensity that we can see in that mid-dark value. As we go into the middle value, that's where we're probably going to see the highest intensity of both colors on either end. And we'll see them as they come towards the neutral will keep those colors the same value. That's where you begin to learn um, how the intensity changes within that middle value range. And the similar thing is true in this row, which is the mid-light. In the lightest light, it's going to be a little bit more difficult to see the t intensity as high. Nevertheless, that will be the highest intensity that we'll see in the lightest value. So I didn't explain that that thoroughly in the, in the first sets that I did. But if you're watching all three sets, um, hopefully you could go back to the, uh, the first and second set and see how that works. So I'll begin. It says place the darkest darks and the lightest lights of the highest intensities first. So this is what we'll do. Now we have this on the palette. So what we'll do first of all, I've got this side labeled green, this side is labeled red. So I'll take the darkest dark that we created and place it right here. That begins to give us the feeling of that relationship or begins to give us uh, something that we can refer to in order to get the relationship of the darkest dark. So this is what we would see as the darkest value. Now if you take, you can take that even darker by adding a little bit of alizarin crimson to it and it will go black. But I'm keeping it here so that you can see that relationship. Then I'll go to the darkest dark of the red and place that on the opposite corner. That's in that dark value range, the highest intensity that we would see in a dark value range. So I'll go in here to my mixture. We'll place that right here. So there we go. That is very, very dark red. We could make it a little bit darker. But let's just settle for this because that is in that darkest value of red. So we have those two now as references. Now we'll go to the lightest lights that we've mixed of the green and 
get the brush really really washed out for that because we don't want any contamination to change the values or the intensities as we're working so I've got the brush really really washed out here now we'll go to the lightest light place it in this corner remember this is a study so when you're doing a scientific study of color you want to control everything to be um, the value and the intensity that you'll need in order to make the study make sense so uh, doing this willy-nilly will probably throw you off if you decide that you're just going to go straight down with one or the other you will find yourself getting blocked in in a way that <laughs> can be unpleasant so following a system like this uh, just helps you to keep the whole thing controlled now again I'm going to rinse all that lightest light of the green and let me say one more time, remind you, this is the lightest value that we can get of the green, still read it as green, but this is, in this lightest value, this is the highest intensity that we'll see that light value. So what the high intensity label means there, I'll have it labeled right here, high intensity, what that means is that that's simply the highest intensity that we will see at that value range. Now we'll go into the red, and also this is the highest intensity that we would see the red at this value range. So I'll just put this right here, and now we're almost ready to move on to the next step. So now that the darkest darks in the high and the lightest lights are placed in their highest intensities, the next thing we want to do is to place the middle values in their highest intensities. And this is where we need to be very, very careful because we need to keep them middle value. Now, as they appear on the palette or in that middle value range, we might have to do a little bit of adjustment. So, the first thing I'll do is to check to be sure that the middle value I have here is in the middle value range. Now, here's how well, I'll show you one of two ways to do that. Here's where you really need to use your eyes to judge. So if I hold this right here, like that, then I need to compare this with that, and this with that. I'm, do, I'm going to do that now on a piece of paper so that you can see it even better. Just put a little bit of this green right here on this piece of paper. Now hold it right there. Now do you see what we're dealing with there? Your eyes are drawn more to, towards this than they are towards this. That means it's darker than the middle value. So I need to adjust that. Now I can adjust it by adding just a little bit of white. Adding a little bit of white to that green until it reaches, until my eyes can see that it neither pulls towards this nor towards that visually. So I'll place another... Uh, this is the value corrected. A little bit more of that green in there. Here's the value corrected. Now, I can hold this here. Now, are my eyes pulling it closer towards this or this? And it seems to really, it begins to sort of pull my eyes a little bit more towards this. I mean, I need to get it very, just a hair lighter. So, this is the way you, you, you train your eyes. You sensitize your eyes to... Um, the value, well this is what we're working with right now, just sensitizing your eyes to the value as compared with the darkest dark and the lightest light. So I'll put another little splotch right here and just hold it right there. Now, is that going more towards this or this or does it seem to be kind of sitting in between? It's, it's difficult sometimes to see it exact. So let's just place, I believe that might be it. I believe that might be sitting visually, more or less visually, value-wise, in between this and this. One other way I might test it is to go to the value scale and hold the value scale right here, squint, like that, or like that, and I'll see that, yes, I am in that middle value range. So... This is one of the best ways I know of to really sensitize your eyes uh, as to the values of the colors that you're seeing. Do a chart like this, and if you do it uh, in the sequence that I'm doing this chart, you'll see really how um, your eyes do begin to 
compare values and see the relationship this to this and this to this are close to the same thing. Um, I'm going to, because I'll need more of that, I'm going to mix more of that right here because I'll need that when I get to the neutral to be sure I have that pretty much in the same value. You see what I'm doing there? I'm keeping this to compare this with so that I can be sure I have the similar mixture. Let's see. Need a little bit more of the green in there. All right, so we'll leave that there. Now, same thing with the red. So I'll rinse the brush, be sure I get all that green out. And I want the middle value of the red. I want it to be middle between this and this. Now, a, a middle value of a red, if this were darker, would be darker here. But remember, this is a scientific study where we're adjusting according to what we have right here. So I will go to the middle value of the red. I'm first of all going to take just the napful red straight out of the tube. I'm going to squint. Now this may be a little bit difficult to see because red, uh, red is a difficult value to read. So I'll just put a little bit of this on here. Now let's compare it. If I hold it here, yes, I can see it's lighter. But is it is? And I hold it here. Now we can see it's it's closer in value to this than it is to this. Can you see that? That it feels darker. Well, it's going especially feels darker as compared, the value compared this to this, this feels darker than that. Now if I hold it to that, it feels closer in value to that. That tells me it needs to be just a little bit lighter. So I'll just pull from the white a little bit lighter and lighten that up just a tad. I have to go carefully and keeping in mind that um, natural red is a very strong color. So let's see, I have it a little lighter there. I can do another little splotch right down here. Now let's test it again. So I hold it against this. I can see that it's lighter now. Is it in comparison, if I compare this to this, is the degree greater than it is if I compare to that to that? It seems closer to me than this. As you can see, this is darker. You see that the, the comparison of this to this seems closer, but not quite close enough. So I need to get that closer to a middle value, add a little bit more white. Just a little bit more white. Okay. Now get that as thoroughly mixed as I can. Now, I'll try it again. So this is the way uh, scientific studies work. It's trial and error, just as if you were in a chemistry lab. And, and so you, if you jump and guess, uh, you get thrown off course. So you have to go gradually. Let's check that. Now you can see there's a wider gap visually between this darkness and this lightness. And we can see that it's closer. This is, this is the relationship here seems to be much closer uh, to this relationship. Dark, light to dark seems to be similar in relationship as dark to light does here. So I'm going to use that. Now, as I put it down, I want to check it again, be sure, visually. Visually, how does that feel? Visually, it feels close enough. It, it is difficult to get these right on the mark, and sometimes we, go, we, we develop these scales, and then we go back and look at them, and we'll begin to feel that we maybe were a little bit darker or a little bit lighter than we needed to be. But I think for the, for the sake of this study, that really works well. All right, so now we have that. We have we placed the middle values of the highest intensities here and here, and now we have uh, we have something to compare with. The next step is to go to the middle intense or the middle uh, the neutral. I should say the neutral. That means saturation is gone. Uh, what we mean by um, neutral, complete neutral is that we won't see any green left and we won't see any red left when we mix those together. We're going to see them more or less as gray. That doesn't mean that you don't neutralize green by adding just a little bit of red to it. You do. But it's the degree of neutral that we're going for in this particular study. So what we'll do here now, let's go to each one of them and we'll find that neutral. Now I'm going to go for that uh, the middle value first. 
So we're going for the darkest dark, the lightest light, and the middle value of the neutral for this step. But I'm going to go to the neutral and middle value first, and then we can compare uh, we can compare uh, uh, the entire scale as we're going. So what I'll do here now that we have this middle value, I'm going to take some. I'll go into the natural red first because it's the strongest. I'll begin to work it into this green and watch what happens you see it's beginning to get more neutral now my palette is a neutral color palette value 5 palette uh, so we can we can really watch what's happening we can see it's value 5 right on the nose of value 5 see it's redder it's more neutral but it's not completely neutral keep pulling that green into it keep pulling the green into it I hope I didn't overshoot the red here until we get as close to neutral as we can get it Now see that something else happened here, which tells me I had the green perhaps just a little bit lighter. Because um, what seems to be happening here is it seems to be getting a little bit lighter as well. So I just add put a little bit more of that over there. Now, I think that probably is as close to neutral. Let's see. That is pretty close to neutral, where we don't see it as redder or as greener, but pretty much gray. And it may fluctuate just a little bit, but um, don't worry about that. Now, see, I see it does feel like it's leaning a little bit more towards, that mixture is leaning a little bit more towards red. I'm going to pull just a little bit more of the green into it and see. This is what red and green do to each other. They, they really throw each other out of balance while we're working with them, especially when we're trying to get that complete neutral. Whoops, did not mean to do that. Let's see. And see, I got to talking, and I, and I wasn't concerned. There we go. That is much closer. Now, that one begins to feel like it's leaning maybe just a little bit more towards green. But see, this is what I mean by training your eye to see these things. Uh, is it leaning more towards green? Is it leaning more towards red? Now, we can piddle with that all day. My experience with red and green uh, tells me that it's very very difficult to get them absolutely neutral so what we do for the sake of study is we get them as close to neutral as we can and we don't fuss about it so I'm going to do that now that is as that is pretty close I can see it's leaning I don't know if you can see enough feel it's leaning a little bit more towards green than it is towards red but I think it's neutral enough for us to work with it uh, so I'm going to rinse the brush now and I'm going to go to the the darkest dark and the lightest light and create neutrals in those. Now unlike uh, unlike I did in the first two uh, the first two sections with the blues and oranges and the violets and yellows, I'm going to take this chart a little bit further although I'm just trying to give you the principles to work with it so that you can do the complete chart. I don't think it's necessary for me to do the complete chart but I'm going to do enough to show you uh, how this thing works. So now I'm going to go for the darkest dark in neutral. And here I will pull the green down and I'll pull the dark red into the green and I'll try to get those two as neutral as possible. So I'll pull them against the palette here. Now let's see. Yes, I believe I hit it. Might be just a little bit, might be leaning just a little bit more towards red. But I think we have it right there. And that's going to look black. That's what red and green do to each other. It's going to look black. That means that you have it neutralized. And one thing that you might notice here that often happens when you mix complements together, the neutral will actually feel darker. And that's only because it doesn't have any color in it to reflect light. So uh, even though it feels darker, and it actually, um, actually is darker, we don't mess with it. We leave it just like that. Now I want to go to the lightest light. You see what's beginning to develop here now. Now we're beginning to develop a relationship uh, between the intensities and the values. So let's go to the lightest light. You do the same thing. So once again, I'm going to pull. Let's go into this, the red mixture of the lightest light and pull it into the green. And we're going to try to get those. Let's put it back in here. Try to get those as neutral as possible. So um, you'll find that in the lightest light, it gets a little bit more tricky. Let's see, we have it there. 
That looks almost white, doesn't it? Well, that's a pretty good sign if it looks almost white. Because white is a neutral, complete neutral. Black is a complete neutral. Not having any color in them. So, there we go. I think we can see that doesn't seem, let me get the, oh, the whole thing on there and be sure. That doesn't seem to be leaning. Let's see. It might be leaning a little bit more towards red. But remember that uh, it probably is not going to register exactly. It depends, it depends on those original mixtures. But if you get it close to that neutral, you're good. So now we have, oh, we have the, the, we have the darkest middle and light value of red in the highest intensity. We have the darkest middle and lightest value of this particular red in their highest intensity over here. And right here we see how they neutralize each other. I'm going to take this one step further and show you how to build the rest of the chart. Well, let me take it a couple steps further. Um, the, the next part of the next step simply tells you to complete the value scale of the highest intensities uh, and then the neutral. So I'll go in here. Um, we, we, we need now, what do we need? In this highest intensity of green, we need a value that sits right between these two colors. So that means that we go right over here, pull from that green. I can start with that original mixture that we had because it might work. And so we'll move back to the, what I call the test strips, which are pieces of paper that you can use for comparing. And we hold this right here. Wow. So you can see relationship. Is it darker? Is it it's a relationship between this and this? The same degree of value as it is between this and this. I think it's a little bit, I think it's closer to, to these two. So that means that that original green I came up with was closer in value to the darkest green. So I'm going to add just a little bit of light here and get those values adjusted. So it's relationships we're building here. Um, so let's, let's test it right here and see. Now is, it, is the relationship of this to this, is this very close? No, I got it too light. So that means I got to split the difference in there between those two. Now this is what happens. This, it begins to, we begin to see those relationships. Relationships means, is it lighter or darker than this? And to what degree is it lighter or darker than this? The lighter, the, the relationship between what I'm doing and this needs to be the same relationship as this. Means that the degree of the value should be uh, the same step, the same degree from here to here as it is from here to here. So let's see, what do we have now? Pull this right here. All right, squint, squint. That seems to be it. That seems to be a closer relationship, those two, than, than what I came up with earlier. So I simply do this. All right, now when I do that, whoa, I'm seeing it lean more towards this. So I'm going to add just a little bit of dark, and this will often happen. But this is the time when you put that first stroke down. This is the time to adjust the relationship. And this is going to help sensitize, as I said before, it's going to help to sensitize your eye so that you'll be able to see these, uh, these kinds of relationships when you're in the process of painting. Which is very important because one way we can make our painting more interesting is to vary uh, values within the painting and just vary them, vary them in small degrees. So small degrees, uh, when you can build the sensitivity so that your eyes can see small degrees, that's going to go a long way towards improving your painting skills. I'm going to do the same thing right here now. So I'm just going to go in this lighter value. I'll just come right over here in this mixture. Pull that together. And I need a value that is the same relationship. So let's see. Okay, now I'm seeing I'm very close to that. You see the, the contrast between this and that is greater than the contrast between this and that. So that means I need to be a little lighter. Now pull the light in there, and now let's see. Now I'm depending on the back of the brush, depending on how it looks on the back of the brush, 
All right, it's a relationship the same. Compare this to that, this to that. That seems, but then when I put it down, it seems to be closer in value to this than it is to that. So this is what you can count on happening when you're working these things. Uh, often it will look the same on the brush, but then as you put it down, you can see that it actually, okay, I need a little bit lighter. I hope that you're able to see uh, these relationships as I'm developing this. Let's see, is this pink right? Oh, there we go. I think that's close. I think that's close. This to this. I think it's, it's still a little bit close. It's a little bit closer to this than it is to that. So I'm going to lighten it just a little bit more and scumble all over it. Okay, so just scumble over that. I'll just scumble in this direction right this just like that okay that's closer now now they seem relatively relatively even this still is a little bit this still the relationship is a little bit a, a little bit wider between here and here and it is between there and there but I think that's close enough for the study I want to go to the reds and do the same thing I'll we'll start with the darkest, I'll start with the original red, just like I did there, on the greens. The original, out of the straight out of the tube, not full red. Now let's just check it out. I better check it out on a piece of paper first. Okay, I'll just put a little bit of this right here. Now let's just check it. Relationship, this to this, that to that. See, it's closer to this than it is to that. So that means I need to darken it just a little bit. So I'll pull a little bit of alizarin crimson into this natural red. Like that. Not much. Just to go a little bit at a time there. Now let's check it out again. Let's check it now. Still kind of close to that. Gap is what the, ga the gap got wider between this and that. So I'm going to go ahead and stroke the color and see what it does when I stroke the color on there. Yes, it's still a little bit darker. Uh, is the relationship as you can see between this and this just a little bit, not very much, just a little bit wider. So that means I added just a little bit too much alizarin. Let's check it now. Now, closer to this. That's Okay, I think I have it closer. Well, close enough. The gaps are close enough so that I can see that it's pretty similar. The relationship between here and here and here and here. Uh, it seems to be a little closer to this now. Um, and I'm going to piddle with it just a tad. Add just a tad of the alizarin back in. So you see, we have to be willing to do these adjustments. There we go. That's a little bit darker. And that did help. So we've got those pretty close. Let's so that means taking this value, oops, I cannot do that, I did not get, oh, and I, I'm glad you saw that because this will mess up the entire chart. If you don't get all that red or all the previous color rinsed out of the brush, um, it's going to mess up the script, the whole thing. So, um, now let's check it out and see, I'll go into this. I'm going to go in the lighter color first. And then add just a little bit of the naphtha red into the lighter color. Well, what I'm trying to do is the same thing. Get the relationship between... You can see on the brush how much closer this is in value to that. Means we need a little bit more of the naphtha. Now let's check it out. Now let's see. Do we have the same, do we have the same value relationship? Value relationship between... I believe so. I believe the value relationship between this and this is very close to the relationship between that and that. That's a matter of of, of, of perception, how you develop your perception. We're going to the neutrals and do the same thing. So what we need there is in this middle value of the the green and the middle value of the red. I better just go right up here. This would be a better way to do it. So what I need here now is a neutral 
that sits in relationship, sits value-wise uh, in the same degree of value between those two. I believe I have it there. You can see that this this uh, this particular mixture of the neutral whoops is you can see a little bit of of, of uh, intensity difference between those and those. I got this one more closely towards the actual neutral itself. Let's get just a little bit more of that light in there. All right, there we go. Let's see now. Uh huh. Now what I can do at this point, because I now I can see, ah, uh, this is way too close to there value-wise. So that means I need to darken. It means I need to pull more of the red and more of the green in order to darken it just a bit. Let's see, is that enough? Let's see. Okay. A little bit too... I mean, a little bit more towards red. Alright, I think that relationship value relationship works better. But one thing I see happen no, is needs to be a little bit lighter. Often you see those things after you put them down. Just a little bit lighter. Between this and that. There we go, right there. But what I'm continuing to notice, and I bet you are too, is how yellow this appears. And that's because I the the value the uh, the, the neutrality is leaning a little bit more towards green here than it is here. So I can change that very gradually. So this um, tells you that sometimes, especially when you're working with these two colors, uh, things will start flip-flopping visually. Now let's get this in exact neutral right here and see if we can adjust that neutral right here yeah just by adjust that just a little bit more now it's <laughs> now it's flip flopping over towards red just a miss I'm gonna miss. all right now we go uh, value wise all right this seems now very close it may be a little leaning a little bit in that direction but it seems very close in value to that and the last step there in the neutral is to get the value relationship of the, the mid light, which is these two. So I'm just going to get light here and lighten up the same neutral that I have here. Let's check it out. Let's see. All right, now you can see it leans a little bit more towards this than it that does towards that value wise. Get a little bit darker. This would have been easier had I started up with a, a, a larger pile of that neutral. So I wouldn't have to uh, keep adjusting. And that might be a, a lesson that you would learn from this. Let's see here. Stem. Let's put that in there and see. This neutral, value-wise. Let's get a little bit warmer than I want it. So I'll just go into this lighter green here and kind of cool it off a little bit. Right there. Now, now how is that value-wise? Value-wise can tend to be just a tad lighter so that we see the same relationship between this and this and this and this and this. Now, what I have built for you are the are five values of the red, five values of the green, and five values of the neutral. Now, if you will take this, you can comp complete the chart by yourself. What you need to watch for, you build your mid, your mid intensity by having the same degree of intensity. You mix these two, it, well start in the darker area, mix these two so that they're same value as this, but the same degree are, are the same relationship and in intensity. A uh, little more neutral than this, 
a little less neutral than that. Same thing here in this value. Mixing these two together, you have a little more neutral than this, a little less neutral than that. So you have the same neutrality relationship. You do the same thing over here. And then as you move down, you keep that value relationship, keep the value relationship between these, and keep the neutrality relationship, meaning that you're going to mix this with this to get that relationship that is more saturated than this, less saturated than this. Same thing here. Going down to this value range, keeping the same value. The splotch here is going to be more saturated than this, less saturated than this, and so on. You've got to do the same thing on the red side. But I think I've shown you enough now so that you could actually do a scientific study of all three of the, the values, of, of the, all three of the sets of colors. You notice that what I've been working with are the primaries and secondaries. If you can do this kind of study for the primaries and secondaries, then you can take it another step further and go into the tertiary colors. Hope you enjoyed this quick tip. If you have questions or a suggestion for a quick tip, leave us a comment right down here in the YouTube comment box. And take a trip over to dyingmice.com and look at all the things we have there for you, including full-length video tutorials. And while you're there, sign up for our newsletter so you'll always be informed of our latest adventures. And thanks for watching.